So this kind of leads us to you. How do you stay centered? How do you stay as a parent and regulate? And there's quite a few ways that we can do that. I talked in the moment, um, but even these things, these things that we're gonna talk about here are more proactive and they're kind of lifestyle decisions that we need to make as adults. And what I really want you to do is kind of focus on each area and see which ones you find you're doing well on and which ones you're not. So these are dimensions of self-care. Um, so what does that mean? So let's take a look at the physical. There's lots of opportunities here. This can be exercising. Um, I know it's hard right now, but sometimes even getting a hat and coat or in your hat, coat and gloves and just taking a 15 or 20 minute walk. Um, heck, it's, it's almost 40 today. It feels tropical. Um, so we've got uh, how you sleep, your sleep habits, um, how you go to bed. Are you turning your uh, you know, phone off, your TV in the room, reducing that and giving yourself a few minutes before you go to bed, making sure that you get to bed at a good time so that when you know you're going to wake up invariably for work or with your kids, you're giving yourself enough sleep, um, taking care of your body, managing your stress, eating well, fruits and vegetables, right? So you're taking care of your physical body. Intellectually, are you doing things that stimulate you and challenge you? That could be reading a really interesting book. It could be looking into something new that you're interested in. Even if you're looking online, finding a new topic to stimulate your brain and your mind so that intellectually you're doing something that's challenging. Because again, our brains do better when they're challenged. Sedentary with our brain doesn't do well, um, it regresses. Socially, this is obviously a really hard one. Um, but even in this moment where you may not be able to have physical contact, um, I know at the beginning of this pandemic, a lot of us reached out to old friends we hadn't seen in a while. Finding opportunities to do that again, planning it into your time, connecting with people in some way, connecting with your family, finding some way to have a social connection um, with someone spiritually. So this can obviously mean many things. Um, for those of us or those of you who are religious, it can be um, spend time in prayer. It could be spend time reading a scripture. Um, it could be going to church, again, in, in, in opportunities when you can, going to the synagogue, going to places of worship. But even for those who aren't necessarily religious, um, the idea of spiritual, being outside of yourself, connecting with something deeper, thinking about things um, that nourish your soul, right? Finding uplifting stories that build you up as a human and see the humanity of all the people around us. Maybe it's being inspired by nature, finding things outside of yourself. You know, one of the things I even like to do um, is just looking up in the moment and looking at the stars and seeing how little I am helps give me perspective in the world around me. One last area too is your emotional um, self-care. So this is just how kind are you? Finding ways of kindness with you and other people. Finding ways of loving yourself and loving other people. Having those emotional connections with people that aren't just social, hanging out and spending time, can be having something deeper, right? So these self-care areas, what I really want you to do right now is take a look at these things and really evaluate in your own life which one of these things are you doing really well on? Um, which one of these things are you doing well? And then taking a look in the other way, what areas could you grow on? Are there areas here that maybe you're not, uh, you're not uh, taking care of yourself that could be affecting you in other places? It's really important too to just see what were areas, are there things on this list that you used to do and you don't do anymore? This could be an opportunity to do that. It might mean scheduling something into your, putting something into your schedule and being deliberate. I mean, all of us know as parents, life kind of goes by, the week goes by and you're like, I don't know what just happened, but somehow we made it, right? But the idea is if we gotta be intentional, right? So maybe one night, instead of scrolling on Facebook for an hour and a half, you say, there's this book I've really been wanting to read um, and it's sitting on the shelf and I'm gonna spend some time or opening up your Kindle and taking a book and reading. Um, instead of you know scrolling through Facebook, watching a movie. Those things are good, but trying to fit, fit time into your schedule um, to do those things. So please take this time. And even as after we do this, take time to really evaluate what areas are you doing well here and what areas could you do better um, for your own self-care. So this one's important and I was really uh, happy to put this, this one on here. Um, it's very, very important that we look at our own guilt in this moment. Um, I think all of us have been there so far at some time, looked at areas where we feel bad or guilty um, to a certain degree about not giving our kids the opportunities they want, um, not being able to give them what they want during this time, um, being sad about the things that our kids are missing and feeling guilty, even though we have no control over it, feeling guilty that we can't do things for them. 
How about um, raising your voice, saying something to your spouse, or your kids that you, you're not really proud of, um, you know, losing it, if you will. Um, all of us, myself included, um, have had those moments. So how do we reframe the guilt and reframe those feelings that we're in? So I think one of the things in this infographic shows is what are the things we can control and what are the things we cannot and trying to come to grips with that. This one cracks me up about the toilet paper. I still for the life of me, I mean, this is gonna be something we'll tell our children and gra our grandchildren about, and they're not gonna understand at all how in the world there was a ration on toilet paper. But either way, I, I mean, this idea of trying to come to grips with what we can control and can't control. Asking forgiveness of yourself and others. So forgiving yourself in the moment saying, I, you know, I yelled at my kid, I yelled at my son or I yelled at my daughter and I feel guilty about it, I feel bad about it. Learning to forgive ourselves and asking your child forgiveness. Um, nothing models that virtue better than asking forgiveness of your child. Um, try it sometimes, I hope you've done it. And if you haven't, try it and see how that models with your child, especially when we want them to ask forgiveness when they do something um, wrong to us or their sibling or uh, someone else in, you know, one of their friends as well. Changing the narrative. So this means, again, it's reframing the idea, looking at it and saying, yeah, the pandemic's really hard. Um, there's so many things I haven't been able to do. Reframing it and saying, what are the things I have been able to do um, because of this? What house projects? What books have I read? What people have I reached out to that I never would have reached out to? You know, I thought about this for myself. I can't believe the amount of time I spent with my family and my children in 2020. I don't think I'll ever beat that. I don't think there's ever a year in my life where I will spend more time with my family than that year. No, I know it had its challenges, but I want to reframe it to the, what are the beautiful parts of that? And kind of maybe spend some time thinking about that to change the narrative. Practicing self-compassion, saying, I had a tough day. It happens. I want to be better tomorrow, but I'm allowed to have a bad day too. My kids, I understand some days they have a bad day. There's a book we used to read to our kids called uh, My No-No Day. I don't know, maybe some of you know, it's about this child who has just a horrible day. Um, it's a bit scary as a parent to read it because this kid has a really tough day. But the idea for us, right, or for, for an older book, my very bad, no good, lousy day, I think it was called, right? So for us, are we allowed to have one of those two? Can we forgive ourselves and say, tomorrow I'm gonna try to do better? Practicing self-care is an opportunity, just what we talked about before on the page before. Self-taught affirmations that welcome um, perfection, imperfection. Now these are not meant to be kind of the Stuart Smalley, I am great, I, I can't remember. I, I can't even remember, I should. Uh, from the Saturday Night Live, right? But this could just be, again, saying, I had a tough day, um, but that doesn't make me a bad person, right? I'm still lovable. Um, I'm still a good, I can still be a good mother. I can still be a good father. Recognizing the true resilience your kids do have. Again, we have focused so much, I know myself as a parent, of the things my kids have missed out on this year, but also realize that there are things out of my control and the things I can't control I wanna help my children to be resilient. They can be resilient and they can make it through. And how can I help them to do that? And part of this is by co-regulating, helping them regulate too. Being okay with asking for help. So that's a hard one for me. I am very, I do not do a good job asking for help, but there are ways that we can do it. So if you're a person that doesn't ask for help really well, this should be a moment where you say, it's okay to ask for help. And if you have a hard time asking for help, just think, times um, where other people have helped you or where you've been able to help other people, what joy that brings you to help other people. And imagine maybe reframe and say, I want to give other people joy by being able to help me. Um, that might be a way to reframe that thought. One last thing is acknowledge the things you're doing right. Um, you know, it's 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 long story, but my wife's doing a podcast right now for her job. Um, and she referenced me a few times in the podcast. So this is me getting back at her. My wife is really good at finding things that can be corrected, can be fixed, things that uh, can improve. And I really value that of her because she's improved a lot of aspects of my life and this house, it's great. Um, but I think it's important too. And she does this well, acknowledging the things that are going well, seeing the things that are going well. So for those of you who are really easy, are really able to see things that are not going well, try to focus on the things that are going well. Challenge yourself and say, I need to find five things that are going well in this house or with my children or on my job and see how that goes, especially for those who have a difficult time doing that. So I told you we would talk a little bit here as we have a few more minutes left. I think we have a, uh, a little less than 10 minutes. I know we started about five after on how do we create structure in the home? Um, and again, everyone has structure, even if it's no structure. Everyone has some aspect of structure in your home. It's just how do we improve this? 
and maybe you're doing a great job and, and that's fine. I mean, all of us can improve on this. My hope is that there's some areas in here that you can think about and maybe glean one or two little things here for your family. Um, so how do we create structure in the home? So one of those things can be creating our household rules. Um, so one way I like to do this is asking the kids to create some of the rules in the house. You'll be amazed at what they can come up with. Sometimes they do a better job than, than we do. Um, so this can be, how do we explore the classroom? How do we do the home? How do we do the bedroom? How do we do for different things in the home? And again, it's always a perfect time to reevaluate. Maybe the rules you had six months, a year ago, aren't working anymore. Reevaluate, keep them fresh. Um, I mean, the, the basic rules of like, let's not hit each other, let's not scream and yell at each other. I mean, those are pretty standard. But like, what are the other rules in the house as far as how we do toys, how we do screen time, those kinds of things. Um, it's always a good opportunity to review those. Setting a daily schedule to the best you can. Like, what are the, what, especially for our younger, our younger school age kids, um, how do they, when do we do meals? When do we do nap if you're really young? When do you do, um, uh, you know, schedule reading time? When do they do their homework? Um, how do we do our unstructured time? So trying to break those up and setting a daily schedule, if you can with your kids, things that they can find predictable and helpful. Um, so you can motivate your child uh, with creating structure. So you can arrange things around chores and rewards so that the fun activities are after the chores. That way, wow, I know you really wanna go take a walk or we wanna go sled riding, um, but we really can't do that until uh, the mudroom is clean. So it, it motivates them to do the chore, the thing you want them to do so they can do the thing they want to do. Fun activities come become, or fun activities come after those challenging activities. And again, for the younger kids, a sticker chart, there's a million opportunities and, and examples online that you can look at. I love this one for, especially for really any of our school age, um, kind of uh, elementary and younger, rotating the toys. Um, if you've got a million toys out, take half of them, put them away, let them pick three or four toys in the house to look at and to do, and then take them all, all everything else, and then bring them back in a week, bring them back in two weeks and watch how excited they are about these toys they haven't seen in forever. It really works. It's like magic. It's amazing. Um, trying to initiate activities in different spaces. Maybe you have a craft area. Maybe you have a puzzle area, a reading area. Trying to do that can be really helpful too. Limits on screen time. I know that it's so hard right now, and, and I feel kind of silly talking about it with virtual learning. But the idea is even when they're doing virtual learning, trying to find if you had rules before virtual learning as far as how much time they could spend on their phone, um, doing fun things, watching a video, doing screen activity, stick back to it, right? Come back to it. Um, the idea is virtual learning is a thing we can't control for a lot of us, right? But we can still put limits. It's still okay as a parent to put limits on screen time. It is absolutely okay. And it's still helpful to do. It doesn't mean, well, they're already looking at five hours at school. What's another three hours? It's still good, it, you know, it's still good to limit it. It's also an opportunity for you to use that as a reward and have a sense of control in your home too. Managing conflict, um, there's opportunities for you to, to say, we're gonna do individual time with individual kids maybe, or doing dyads and triads, depending on how many kids you have, just to try to limit and kind of adjust with some of that um, sibling, that you, or sibling conflict you may be seeing. I love this one too, scheduling family meetings. So this can be this opportunity of maybe weekly you go over the schedule. I, I will say in my family, my kids love family meetings. I can't believe it. I It's crazy, but they really do. So this is an opportunity to go over the week, go over whatever you can, go over the meal plans, whatever plans you have, they will sit for it. And I always like to say one time, it takes, I think, in my opinion, about, this is anecdotally, three times to set a, uh, a new tradition. So if you do this, if you have a family meeting on Sunday, two weeks won't do it. I think if you get to that third week and you do it three weeks in a row, your kids by that fourth week will say, when is the family meeting? At least anecdotally, that's what I have found.